Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Obehi Obufo. It's one of my greatest honors to be here today. Uh, my name is Mohamed Bashir Kamara. I'm a Guinean by nationality and African by blood. I'm currently pursuing Global Challenges degree at the Africa Leadership University, the Harvard of Africa. And uh, I have been working in several international organizations, uh, GCI, Aina Think Tank, whereby I serve as a senior police advisor. And I'm inclined to politics governance, uh, you know, entrepreneurships in order to boost Africa. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much for that, uh, Mohammed. So how did you get into leadership? I think that is um, an argument that is uh, really interesting. Do you want to tell me how you got into that? Uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a good question and insightful, um, and insightful aspirations. Because uh, from time to time, I realized that uh, we cannot uh, move forward our society without passing through leadership. And leadership is very important because it is characterized by 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 your uh, ability to lead people, not the position that you have. And this has been uh, made through different you know things that I've been doing in my community, and I ended up being in the leaderships you know positions whereby I had to lead people, I had to make my community more better. All right, that's interesting. I, I agree with you. Um, now, when you look at leadership, uh, maybe for example, you you are currently in Guinea, correct? I'm currently in the Republic of uh, Rwanda. Rwanda, but you're originally from Guinea. Yeah, Guinea. Yeah, West Africa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's cool. Uh, okay, let's start from Rwanda. Uh, tell me, how do you look at uh, leadership as you see it around there in Rwanda? Firstly, I have to say that the leadership is not merely about the positions, but it's about the impact that you make in your society. And what I've realized that here, the leadership's uh, characteristics of different leaders in Rwanda are very, 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 very uh, uh, into impact that they are making in, in, in their society. It is a kind of participative aspect whereby all people are supposed to do something for their society. And it's not only rely on someone who's going to lead the people, but everyone has something to do for the growth of uh, its community. And this is something that has inspired millions of millions of youth, you know, in Rwanda, people, youth who are here to study, to learn, uh, as have been grasping so many things that they, are, they have been incorporating into their society. And uh, this is what I'm saying to I'm speaking to you now only because I know that uh, the Rwandan leadership, it is an exemplary for all African countries. As you can see that Rwanda from uh, uh, from years and years and today is not the same. Uh, uh, so many things have been changed. And this is not because uh, uh, the, the country ha has so many things or not, even though the country doesn't even something, but through their leadership, the country is moving forward. That, that's true. Because leadership is about providing solution to the challenges of the people. And it is not really possible to say that a piece of land or a country as it were in Africa, any part of Africa, uh, doesn't have resources. There are resources all around. It just depends on how are we able to explore these resources for the benefit of the people. So yes, of course, in Rwanda, uh, it might not have all the petroleums, uh, but there are resources there. Uh, and what really makes the difference is the leadership there. How are the people able to tap into their resources and able to use it for the benefit of the local people? Because exactly. if you compare that to maybe in Nigeria, for example, or in Congo, where you might have a lot of resources, we can see that the people are so free. It's not because there is no or there is enough. It is because the people at the helm of affair do not know how to administer these resources for the benefit of their local people. Therefore, the people suffer in the midst of their abundance. So in this sense, I think leadership is something that we really should pay attention to in Africa of 2023. All right, now I have a curiosity because you are still at the university there, you are finishing, uh, you are your final year, correct? Yeah. yeah All right, yeah. because you are a younger person, I want to uh, try and understand, what do you see other younger Africans think 
about leadership in their continent because they are going to be the leaders of tomorrow. There is no two ways about it. What do they feel about how the continent is led today? Thank you so much for that question. But before delving into that question, I would like to highlight something very important and crucial in terms of leadership. And also, I'm going to contextualize it into the African realities or even Africanize my concept or my insight that I'm going to highlight on right now. You know, we have two factors of development. We have firstly the human resources and also the natural resources. And however, in Africa, we have so many natural resources, but we are facing the lack of human resources because the human resources are the driven resources that can change something and the natural resources are not driven, you get? So that the ability of the human resources that can move, that can transform those natural resources. But unfortunately, that's not happening right now. It's very complicated. And if we are contributing to the human resources, I do believe that from time to time, Africa will be one of the better place to live in. And considering uh, the fact that leadership, it's uh, something that is tangible, something that is that's very, very important in our communities um, transformations. As you can see today, African youth uh, are left behind in terms of the in terms of leadership, like specifically the governance aspect, because so many youth that have been interacting with, they are saying that, oh, I don't want to do politics. I'm afraid of politics. Politics is a bad game. But there's one thing that I usually tell them. If you don't do politics, politics will make you do. In any way, if you don't do politics, politics will make you do. Because you are the agent. You are the cornerstone. You are the springboard of the development of your continent, of development of your country. If you don't participate into that, because every single thing that you are doing here, it's politics. Politics is about strategies. Politics is about strategy, what you are supposed to do. But if you don't try to look at further about those kind of things, even though you have good ideas, you have so many innovative ideas, you will not be able to transform your community. This is something that I have been highlighting on because we usually say that the development of Africa depends on youth. And now those youth are not inclined into the leadership aspect of governance. It's very hard because currently the most difficult things that we are facing as Africans is the lack of policy, governance, we do not have a strong mindset in order to develop our continent. And those youth are left behind. It's very complicated. What you are supposed to do is to look at those youth and to tell them that in the next years to come, you are going to be the ones who are going to be leading Africa. You are going to be the one who's, who's going to be leading your country. Putting, internalizing that in their minds, they will be aware of some of the challenges that they are going to be tackling in order to change their life, their community, and their continent. Now, when you talk to this uh, other younger African like you, and they tell you that they, they are not interested in politics, they are afraid of politics and things like that, uh, what kind of justification do they give you? Like, what are the concrete reasons? Why? Instead of becoming a participant in politics, they are just apathy. They are looking at it from afar, whereas it actually is conditioning them whether they know it or not. They usually say that politics is a bad game. And I said that why you don't want to participate in those bad games in order to make it as a right game? That's the fact. In order to criticize only, but not to contribute to those, uh, to make that game as a better game for all, for the whole community. That's the thing. 